On May 20th and 21st, 1927, Charles Lindbergh, a.k.a. Slim, a.k.a. Lucky Lindy, a.k.a. The Lone Eagle, made history by completing the first solo non-stop transatlantic flight, piloting his monoplane, the Spirit of St. Louis, from Long Island, New York to Paris, France. To celebrate the anniversary of Lindy's achievement, we're showing SolidWorks users how to model this 30-inch wingspan version of this iconic aircraft. Throughout this series, we'll fly through lessons on how to work off of imported images, and we'll use a series of extrusions, lofts, and sweeps to model the Spirit of St. Louis. Let's get started. In part one of this series, we'll start importing some downloaded images to model around. Keep this technique in mind when modeling any vehicle, be it an aircraft, boat, or car. It's pretty easy to find three-view drawings of historic or iconic vehicles on the internet these days, so I was able to find this drawing of the Spirit of St. Louis, which I used to split into my three views, top, front, and side. Before I drop in my images, I'm going to change the color of a few of my sketch lines to make them easier to see while sketching over the black lines of these images. To edit the default colors, navigate to Tools, Options, or click this small gear icon located in the top of the SOLIDWORKS window. In the System Options box, navigate to Colors, and here I'm going to change my underdefined and inactive sketch lines to a bright blue to make them highly visible. Now let's start laying out our top view image. I'm going to sketch on the top plane and just draw a few construction lines to control the size of my aircraft. Most of the modeling can be done on one half of the airplane and simply mirror it across the right plane, so I'm going to set up my sketches accordingly. I'm going to be 3D printing this model later on and I want to have a 30 inch wingspan, so I'm going to dimension my horizontal construction line to 15 inches for the right side of the aircraft. To insert an image, navigate to Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture, and we'll navigate to our top view image. And just visually adjust the size and position of this image in relation to the construction lines to get the size and position as close as possible. You can also enter values in the Sketch Pictures Properties box to fine-tune its size and position. With our first view in place, we can now add our other two views and size them to line up with our top view. Let's drop in the front view and again draw in a few construction lines to help visualize the size this image needs to be. I want the very center of my nose cone to lie on the origin, so I'm going to position this view accordingly. I'll go ahead and follow these same steps to drop in the side view, taking my time to line the image up to the other views. I'll see you on the other side. Now you can see how these three views are nicely aligned with each other, so we can start adding in some construction sketches. We'll first draw on our side view to sketch out the foundation for our loft guide curves. We'll use the revolve tool later on to model the nose cone, so I'll ignore that area for now and just sketch the outline of the fuselage using splines and straight lines.
Now with our outline done, let's draw in several vertical lines, which we will use to create a series of construction planes for our various profile shapes. Luckily, in this case, I have images of the profile shapes at these areas designated by the letters A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to line up my planes to those designated lines, plus a few other areas. Now exit the sketch and we'll begin creating our construction planes. Navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane, and we'll start with our front bulkhead, so select that line in our sketch, and we'll select the right plane to make this new plane perpendicular to the right plane. We could follow these same steps to create the rest of our planes, but I'll show you another option as well. Select the plane we just created, and again navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane, and then select one of the points on our A bulkhead line to drop a plane coincident to that point. I'm going to go ahead and follow this technique to create the rest of my bulkhead planes. And let's go ahead and rename these planes just to make it easier to navigate to each one. As I mentioned, I have images for a few of these bulkheads, so I'm going to drop those in their respective planes and line them up just as I did with the three main views. Bulkhead A is a simple oval shape, so I'm going to just import images for bulkheads B, C, and D. So let's sketch on the B plane, and I'm going to use the Convert Entities Sketch tool to copy the line that designates the height of this bulkhead. and I'm going to hide all of my construction sketches and planes to make this easier to see. Again, we'll go to Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture to drop in our bulkhead image. And I'll simply resize this image to match its height to that of the copied line. So I'll just repeat this for bulkheads C and D. With our initial layout in place, this concludes part one of the series. As you can see, using this three view technique to model takes a bit of time in the initial setup, but bear with us. In part two of our series, we'll start picking up momentum by adding in our profile sketches, and we'll begin modeling the fuselage using the lofted boss tool.